The Arts Center inspires creativity and contributes to community well-being through equitable access to and engagement with visual arts. We collaborate to offer exhibitions, learning opportunities, artist development, and cultural events centered on art, artists, and art enthusiasts in the greater Corvallis area. My name is Claire Elam. I am the Artist Accelerator Program Director, and I'm here today with Justin Lodge to talk about his work in Evolution of Practice, the current show at the Art Center. Justin, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, thank you, Claire. Um, I'm Justin Lodge. Uh, I'm an artist. Um, I work primarily in um, with 2D work. Um, I've been um, a painter for many years and uh, when I was doing the um, the original accelerator program um, I was uh, working uh, mainly in gouache uh, but also oils and uh, the work that's uh, going to be in the gallery for this show is um, digital so it's it's basically created digitally and and printed out but it's still in the same spirit of colorful two-dimensional work thanks justin um so you talk a little bit about how you're getting into digital work from painting um i'm used to seeing your work as a lot of landscapes and um kind of almost fractal patterns of landscapes. Do you want to talk a little bit about how um, the the difference for you between digital painting and oil painting and how that relates to your concept or the craft of creation? Yeah, craft is, I think, a little bit tricky for me um, because I get um, bored pretty easily. <laughs> and uh, um, while I love painting, and I am still painting. Um, a few years ago, I got kind of frustrated with um, only being able to create one one piece of work and have that kind of stand alone. I think with um, the digital work, there's um, you know the the editing capabilities are just incredible and I can create one piece and and copy it and manipulate it and also take pieces out um, put other pieces in from other works I might have done and um, there's just a lot of freedom there um, also it, it, the ability to, to print multiples out is is uh, very attractive to me um, the drawback, of course, is there's there's not a physicality, so you don't get the um, satisfaction of moving paint around, um, which is why I still still do paint and and will continue to. You know, I've I've played around and I've have experience making work digitally for for many years, but um, not doing it on a sort of fine art level. Previously, when I was making um, paintings, I would use uh, uh, programs like AutoCAD or Photoshop and Illustrator to sort of help with the ideas and the concepts of bringing things together. It was kind of like a part of the scaffolding. Um, so having it be really the, the, the final product is, is new for me. Um, I'm still still playing around with it and, and really honestly trying to see if it's something that I want to uh, continue with. Well, it's exciting to see you uh, develop some of those ideas that you worked on in the accelerator with me and uh, take them to a different place from where they were. So the show that you're in is the Evolution of Practice. It has eight of the 16 graduates of the program so far, and it's great to see you guys all together. Watching you put up the show today was a treat for me, just seeing you all interact. Um, I talk a little bit in the Accelerator about practice and how that relates to business, et cetera, but how does... Um, the idea of an evolving practice, what does that mean to you? Well, I, I feel like personally my 
work is always evolving. Um, and it's because, like I said before, I get, I get really bored <laughs> easily. Um, and it, you're particularly with, with one way of working. And so, um, it, not only the, in terms of craft and, and the, the, the physicality of the work, but also with, um, the content, um, I, I tend to want to keep moving forward, uh, and uh, that's not always great in terms of making a, a full, coherent body of work. But uh, um, I, I do see it as an evolution. You know, looking back at you know what I've created five years ago and, and what's come between. So for me, I'm I, I guess I'm kind of striving for something that um, is. It meaningful, like I'm, like I'm trying to find the thing that is is meaningful, that's that is interesting to me, uh, in that sense, but also fun, and so that's I, for me that evolution is always kind of a, a um, exploration of of those things. What's meaningful and and what's fun? What do I actually want to do? So you've you've talked a little bit about getting bored easily, which I think. A lot of artists, myself especially, can can relate to that that need to be making something new, and uh, new material or new ways of making is exciting. Um, do you see yourself sticking in the two D world? Next time I talk to you, are you going to be making ten foot tall sculptures, or are you happy in that realm right now? Probably. Um, I have a background in. Um uh, landscape architecture, which involves three-dimensional design. So I have a pretty hefty training in uh, 3D design and, and thinking spatially. Um, before that, I was making spatial installations. I think I got to a point as as a designer that the artistic aspect, the more, the more creative aspect, wasn't being fulfilled. And so I decided to kind of delve into two-dimensional work uh, because it's the the space is limitless in a way. I mean, you you have you have boundaries, uh, but within those boundaries, there there is there's no limit in in terms of um, two-dimensional space. As I got back into working to, into two-dimensional art, this is probably almost twenty years ago now. Um, the love of the sort of limitlessness of of creation, you know, with, within that space, uh, I think is, is really profound for me. So I had no idea that you used to make spatial installations and I knew a little bit about your architecture background from when I first met you, but those sound really interesting. Do you want to tell me a little bit about maybe what those looked like and the concepts behind them? Well, there are similarities, um, with that work and the 2D work that I've been doing the past several years. Um, the installations were um, uh, compositionally based um, on ge like geometric forms. Um, so you'd kind of like walk into um, a space that was designed, created. So the material in these was mostly some kind of fabric that would be uh, kind of uh, gauze-like, so you could see through it, and then I would project um, project video onto these, and so the video would catch on on the gauzy fabric, and then also bleed through to the other side. Um, and the video that was being projected was was very saturated in terms of color, and it often had uh, aspects of landscape in it, um, like like waves or even, you know, skies or trees or things like that. You know, I'd put them together together in um, geometric configurations. So it'd be kind of like walking into a space that was very colorful and moving. Um, but but there were there were boundaries that were, you know, sort of ge geometrically laid out. And so that idea of geometry, color and landscape is really what's carried on into um, my work recently. Um, I uh, like to put in landscape. Um, I like to to think about it and have it have it be part of the content. but in the end, it's it's kind of really about color for me. Um, I want the, you know what whatever the landscape is, i'm I'm not that interested in making a, a naturalistic 
uh, looking landscape. It's more about the color for me and how that comes through. Um, and that these, these colorful landscapes are framed and organized uh, usually within some kind of geometry, whether that's sort of a hard edge geometry or what's I've been doing more recently is a more sort of free flowing organic, more free flowing organic shapes. So you talk a lot about colorful landscapes and not necessarily having them be based off of anywhere in particular or very accurate. But are there um, spaces or places that you base some of the feelings with the colors off of in your work? In general, um, over the past like 10 years, um, I've been lucky enough, actually, I should say since moving to Oregon to um, ha- have beautiful views um, that I can see from my window. <laughs> and um, that this was when you know, I... I we had that when it lived in Albany and and now in uh, West Lynn. Um, a, a, there, I, I have the ability to look out at sort of beautiful mountainous views. and um, But in particular, my view when I lived in Albany uh, was a, a western-looking um, view so I could see the, the sunset every night. And even if it was cloudy and raining all day, it seemed like as soon as the sun started to hit the mountains, the clouds would break and they're just, you know, even for five minutes, there'd be a fantastically colorful sunset. And it's, it's really, it's those colors of the sky and those colors of sunsets. And my my view right now is more of a, a sunrise set or sunrise view. Um, it's it's those those very bright catching, uh, eye catching um, colors that for me it makes me pause and maybe brings a moment of clarity, and um, I find that very inspiring and and I try to um, reproduce those to a certain extent in the art. Thanks, Justin. Um, it's been great to hear kind of how your work has gone through evolutions of practices um, for many years and still see those those motifs and themes throughout your work. Um, the colors especially, when I see that, I think of your work, kind of those sunset um, saturated colors that are almost like verging on glowing themselves. Um, I think that's about all the time we have, so thank you so much. Is there anything else you would like to add? No, but thank you, Claire. It was, uh, it's great to be back here at the Art Center, and it's great to see you again. Thank you for listening to Tack Makes. This is a new creative project at the Art Center, and I hope you enjoy our learning curve as much as we do. You can find more episodes on YouTube and Spotify and on our website, thearts.net. That's arts with an S.